Yes, go ahead. Okay, okay. Uh, so let me do this. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to today's session. We will be talking about uh, element locators in automation. So we'll be talking about element locator today. And my name is Bolaji Nadunoga, and uh, we're taking the class today. So basically, this is just more like an overview of what we'll be talking about. It's not really uh, something that to take a lot of time, but we'll be talking about the introduction to talk about what is a uh, locator, what do we need the locator for, do we need it at all, what, what are the functions of it, what and how does it work? And also we'll talk about types of locators that we have. And also we'll talk about terminologies because working as a QA, you have to uh, understand some few terminologies here and there that people use at work. And it's a little bit uh, different from organization to organization, from squad to squad, and from individual to individual. So it's a little bit different. So, uh, element locator, like I said, it's an address that identifies the web element uniquely on the web page. We use locator to access HTML from a web page. Sorry, can, can we can we mute? And locator can be considered as a building block that we need in automation, and so far, so good. Based on my experience, uh, I get to realize that when you're writing your code or when you're right doing automation testing, you spend most of your like you spend like if it, let me say seventy percent of your time on locator, only locator, and which means that it's very very important and it's a very vital aspect of automation that you really really need to know and really really need to understand your craft around it. So, but for starter, like locator is in automation framework, lets you automate and, inter and interact with the web element on the DOM. And if there's one thing that you need to master in doing web uh, app web page uh, automation, it's uh, locator, which is something that you really, really, really need to put your mind into. And I would want everybody to kind of like pay attention this time because without this, trust me, you will you will struggle a lot, which is the like more like the truth of it, because you really need to understand how to use the locator while doing the automation. So we have types of locators. We have uh, ID, we have link text, we have tag name, we have expert, we have CSS, we have partial link text, we have class name, and we have name itself. So this are all the types of locators that we have. So moving forward, we will look at different types of uh, locators and how they work and how we can actually get you get to use them also. And then, like I said, we're talking about terminologies in in locators. We have DOM, we have developer tools, and we have inspect. So when I'm trying, when I move to the practical part. I will show you a, a little bit about all of this, but we just need to focus on this tool for now that I can, uh, that I'm used to, let me say that. You know, I'm not sure there might be more of this, but the one I'm used to is this. And then uh, when you're talking about uh, like elements on web page, because to be honest, if you want to automate, you're basically automating a, a web application. So when you're automating a web application, so what are the things or the elements on the page that you can actually like find using locators? So we can use uh, the list, we have the button, the links, the image, inputs, radio button, checkboxes, drop down list, test areas, and we have pop-up. So this is just a little short like presentation that I have. So without taking much of our time, 
I would want us to jump into the practical part of it and so that we can all have our get the hands dirty a little bit. So I can you all see my visual studio? Because I just yes, switched on. Okay, thank you. And uh, do you have is there any question regarding the presentation? It's a little bit short because it's it's no really hard to, to to explain that. But if it's if there's any question, please let me know before I move forward. Probably I just need to change it back and can see if we have any question. Please, can I ask a question? Please go ahead. Move on. Can you go back one more slide from this? Uh, there is this one that has like um, a chart or something. Uh, uh, what, what are the, um, yes, this one, this one. Okay. Yeah, yeah the, the locator is at the center um, connecting to all of this. Yes. Now, how do they relate to the locator? Or what specific function do they offer for? Like yes, I said, the locators. no, no, no. The, the thing is, it's more like we have, uh, we have all of these. We have, this tag name is a locator. Xpath is a locator, CSS selectors is a locator, partial link, like all of them, they are all locators, but we have, these are the different types of locators. They are all different types. So they are all still locators. So it now depends on when you are within your own automation and then you now decide on, okay, I want to use Xpath, I want to use CSS, I want to use class name because of the type of, probably the type of automation you're working on. So, but, or the type of projects you're working on, it depends sometimes. So, at my place of work, sometimes I get to realize that the developers work with or ID, so it's easier for me to use. Or probably, or they have in the DOM, I can pick up the HTML of it, it's not it's stable, I can decide to use this. Or if this expert is not stable, I can decide to use CSS. It's not like as if you, you are being forced to just one thing you yeah you have a lot of divers here you can decide to use anyone you you want but moving forward like when when i move into the practical part you will get to understand that hopefully more uh, thank you very much you're welcome sorry do i have another question here i really want us to more like a uh, talk because i was given two hours which I really think it's too long. So I rather spend it talking with everybody. <laughs> okay, so let's move into the, uh, into this. So I was kind of like uh, preparing for the class today. So I have this, I don't know if it's too big or it's too small. So let me just widen it a bit. So, I uh, will want to, okay, let's do it this way. Okay, so uh, I will want to use this website, this application as a case study today. So, you know, in in different projects, we have uh, different type of scenario that you want to automate, and then different types of uh, user journey that have been assigned to each QA or probably per each sprint. So, but I want us to have this imagination that if we are in, let's say, sprint five, and then the goal of sprint five is to have the login functionality working. So. I believe that the developers have worked and then they've made their development and everything is in order. So we have the tickets now in QA column. And then the, the QA will, will like put it into the QA or uh, in QA. So um, Bology picked it up and I want to start writing uh, my, my steps and my future file for my automation. And I want to believe that, yes, I, Balaji has his, uh, all these, uh, I have my framework set already. 
Oh god, this is and they're uh, trying to have a notepad. And I have my framework ready already. And what I need to do is just to write my future file and uh, see how I can do that. So but in this in this sprint, I was asked to work on the login. So I navigate to the website and uh, I am able to click on login. And uh, OK, this works here. Eh? Also, and I feel like okay, I click on this also. I'm kind of like doing a little bit of exploratory testing first to be sure that okay, yeah, it's it's actually working before diving into the automation part of it. So I have this um I have this option here, login. I have this option here to sign up and okay, I can decide to use anyone, which is good. So I decided to use this and I have the username here, it shows that I OK, it's working. It can accept it some can accept something and then we have it. It accepts. I can put in anything there, which is really good. So yeah, since I'm working on login, I want to believe that, yes, I've already gone through this process of sign up and I have my login credentials already. So what I need to do is look, looking at this page right now, what I need to do is to write my uh, steps. I'm just trying to break it down very well. So because just sometimes you kind of like tend to make mistakes while writing it, but if you break it down and just take it one step at a time, it's a bit better. So I write my future file like this, giving I navigate to to the website. And when I put my action, I I want to believe that this is already been taken already, so I don't want to break it down a little bit. So when I click on sign up on the header, and I click on sign up, yeah, this this page is displayed, and I need to input my username and input my password. Then I need to click on this remember me option. It's not compulsory, but I just feel like okay, I want to check every boxes in this uh automation I'm doing this uh, scenario that I'm working on. So then I click on and uh, okay, and I hence our username and I enter password and I click on remember me. Checkbox and I click so and I click on login button. Then after that, let's see something. So I think I have one here. Let me see if this will work. So when I click on all of this, what's gonna happen? Okay, let me uh i think i have this here okay so we have this sorry if i'm moving too fast please just kindly call me back so we all can be on the same page on this. And then I put in that. So let's click on login. So successfully login. So when you click on that, what's going to happen is the. Yeah. This uh, instructor page is displayed. Then which is what we need to write then. Uh, Okay, so in this situ in this situation, like everybody has different types of feature rights there, uh, feature file, but this is not really a longer feature file like that. So I tend to uh, put in my parameters here. I'm passing them on the feature file. So it's 
something that you can also do. It depends. So, no. Okay, so you can pass it here like that. So this is my future file. And so do you, is there anyone uh, struggling to understand this? So, so I can probably just take it back a little bit. How I come about this future file. Okay, I have uh, silence. That means yes, nobody. So, uh, hello, there is. Okay. Hello. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm listening. My question is, um, you are using the um, test environment to write your your um, script, my future, right? My, yeah, my future file. Yeah. So, is it is is that the system? Is that the way it works? Are we meant to use the test environment to write this, or we use the acceptance criteria from the EBA to do this? Using the acceptance criteria from the EBA, fine. Yeah. Or using the uh, environment is fine also. As it is right now, I do not have any acceptance criteria, so I'm just trying to work with what I have, which is the okay. environment. Okay. So, but even if you work with the uh, what's it called with the AC that you have been given, it's just you trying to uh, to be uh, to come to, to be in line and to make sure that what the business uh, required have been met have been met by what the developer uh, did. I hope okay. you understand what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. So that is why I'm just trying to use this, and there's no way I can get all all of these steps without actually being on this page. So, so I was thinking that maybe if I if I'm writing this based on the BS um, acceptance criteria, then yeah. I can now checkmate what I've written my steps, and uh, I can checkmate it with what the developer has done. To of course, see if it works. Yes, yes, okay. exactly. That's 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 with the that's you've said it all. And if you're having any issue regarding that, then you just need to raise the bug and or probably call the attention of the developer to it. Okay. Okay. So good. So I think what we have here is what I have here. So and I also want to believe that you guys have been taught our step definition. So we just need to move forward on that. So then we generate our step definition. Uh, OK, so we have our step definition here and also want to believe that everything has been like taking care of also so okay so i also saw like on the last class that you guys have been taught and taught how to create the page update folder so i'll just dive in into creating the login page page object so all you need to do is create this and then you name it Uh, yeah, in this naming convention, to be honest, it's not really like composure. You put page at the back, but I tend to do this. It's just my personal thing. And so that I will be able to understand what I create here. And so I will have some mixed up in, in the script. So then I create that, I call it login page. And we have this page already, page. So what i need to do is i need to call my web uh, my web driver and also my hooks on this page and for me to do that i would need to uh, call my hooks first
so and then I need to uh to do this to instantiate it and then I think you guys know how to do all of this if I'm not wrong. No, 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 no. Something is wrong somewhere. Okay, it's giving me a class. It's meant to be a public. Mm, that's weird. Okay, let me see. Okay, I think this is where the issue is coming from. Okay, I created this. Okay, let me take some step backward. Shouldn't be like that. Okay, let's create the page again. The class. Okay, I think before the beginning, like started class, I created one and I forgot to delete it. Maybe. This is 20. Uh, let me see. Let's switch a little bit. They should be screen now. What do you say? Um, I, 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 you need to step back. Okay. Can you hear me? Hello? Hello, this is Dolu Shebun. Can you hear me, please? Yes, I can hear you, Shebun. Uh, probably you need to declare your driver before you, as in your public highway driver, driver, before you go into that particular class where you now declare your, your hooks. Yes. Sorry, Shago, can you come again? Answer for the Nigeria. Because okay. as far as we are concerned, I, I mean you can okay. declare your driver. We oh. Yeah. oh sorry, 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 sorry. Thank, thank you, Shaku. Oh, the noise is coming from somewhere. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you so much. <laughs> totally forgot about that. So I need to declare my web driver first, and uh, I was rescued for that. No, 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 no. Something is wrong. It has to be I Balaji is busy. I I busy. Sorry. I you need to be public class. Then you op um your or uh, page object. What's the name? Public you have class. Login yeah login page. The name of your page object, and then yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Public Sorry. class. Then I you think you're. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Class about house page. Mm -hmm. Public web driver. to trying to well, I, did. Mm. I think well, I did. delete what you go on line eight first okay yeah delete that completely then you can put public in front of line nine should be public class login page oh, okay then okay. you now declare Sorry. yes yes 
<laughs> All right. Yes, then you can now declare your web driver in that class. Sorry. It's uh what's it called? The latest update. Twenty oh god. Twenty twenty two. Yeah. Okay. And then we can start with this public iWeb driver. Driver. Okay. Uh, uh -uh. My Chinese laptop was wrong today. Wow, that's strange. So just go like that. What am I doing? You need to create your a constructor and assign your web book to the driver now. The constructor. Yeah, that's yeah. where you now have public login. That is where you now and then create your... a method. Yeah, they create a method. Yeah. Enter from where you are now. Another line of code. Another line. Yeah. Put no sorry, no no no, no 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 no. Put your semicolon back. It's my semicolon. Uh, yeah, press enter. Sorry. Yeah, press enter. Then yeah, public. Then login Sorry. page. And then your brackets, and then you now op open another bracket to put your driver yeah. in it. Yeah. I was mixing yeah. it up a little bit. Sorry. Yeah. So now your driver comes in here now. Yeah, driver. And then I call my books here. Yeah, so I do this. Okay, good. Thank you, VC. <laughs> Thank you, Shago. <laughs> yeah, so uh, this is where we'll be talking about the, the locators and then how we can uh use them and how we can uh call them on on our script so first of all we need to write the private by and then since first thing we are working on is the login menu which is here uh we want to click on the sign up on the header and then we need to write here here and say sign up and uh, Put equals to by dots. So these are the list of the locators that we have. As you can see, we have class name, say selector, equals, ID, link test, name, partial test link, reference equals, tag name, expert. So now we need to now decide, and you need to now decide on which one you want to use for uh for your element that you're trying to look for so what you need to do is you go to let me log out can i ask this question please sorry please do um where you are using that private um uh, if you go back to yeah you're using private by is it not find element by uh that we are not there yet Okay, all right. Another year. So, um, so since we all we are trying to expect is sign up, which is we are trying to look for the element of look to look element to locate this uh button here. So what you need to do is you right click, and when you right click, you inspect. And if you uh, go back to about the presentation here, where I discussed about uh terminologies so inspect you might hear a love or oh, i inspect the page i inspect that button i inspect that functionality so that is what it means by inspect so when you inspect uh is right you right clicking on this and then you see the option inspect and also you might hear a lot of oh i will check the developer tools i will check a console so this is the developer tools here 
all of these elements, console, and all of these are the developer tools that we have. So since we are trying to inspect sign up, so what we can do is automatically, as, as you right, right click on that, it will take you to that or to this or to the element, pointing that element to you for you to inspect. But if you sometimes probably you're having doubts of probably you're not sure of the elements, you can write, you can click on this button here, this one here. If you click on it and over on this, on the button you're or the functionality you're trying to inspect, so that you can probably you want to double check and be sure of what you're looking for. If you click on it, it will automatically bring this for you here. So let's see another thing. For example, if I right click on this, we have it this air on sign up here if i click on this as you can see it's changing on the dom also it's changing like that so if i move somewhere else you'll see it's changing so if you're trying to get the actual uh, locator you're looking for then you can just use that functionality but since what we are looking for is sign up if you click on it it will bring it half for you here and then also because i, I believe that most of you are just uh, really new and then uh, there are some uh, plugins or probably let, let, let me call it extension. Yeah, that is the right word for that. There are some extension that you can uh, use to actually help you in learning how to use uh, uh, your to locate your element and to locate your locator very fast. So in this situation now, if you right click, what you need to do is right click on this and then you click on go to copy you see options here, you see copy selector, which is CSS selector, you see JS parts, you see styles, you see X parts and full X parts. But in this situation, you're only limited to this, just let me say three or four here that you can use. But like I said, in this part here, we have, we have more options here. We have ID, CSS, name, link text, and all the likes. But, uh, I would want to like say that for you guys, you guys can download or have this extension. It's called Selectors Up. At least it's not, I wouldn't say it's 100% accurate, but for uh, for your learning, I would say it's good. So it's Selectors Up. Okay, yeah, it's, it's an extension. So if you click on it, it's automatically, like, uh, you can download it and then you have it here as an extension here. So this is the selectors hub. So I would, so when you have that, so, so that I can use that to teach you guys today, I would, so when you, yeah, okay. So when you have inspect the, uh, the element or probably the, the functionality that you want to check and you've inspected, it, you will see this arrow here. Then you click on it, you see selectors hub here because I've already installed the, uh, the extension. So when you click on it, you will uh, it should pop out. So yeah, yeah it is. So as you can see, we have more options here than what we have here, which is just more of uh, selector and expert and JS part here. But here we have index parts relative CSS. We have jQuery and we have the tag name. Sometimes you might have more than this. You might have the link, partial link and the likes. But here we have absolute S part also, which is good. So in this situation here, we want to, uh, I will be using X part here. So I click on the X part here. Okay, and then I click on the S part here. But should I? Okay, don't let me, I, I don't want to mix it up for everybody because I just thought of something right now. So I would want us to use the accurate one because I'm getting, so I don't look like I'm getting some people lost. We're talking about login and then I'm using sign up. So let's go back, take, some step backward. So I'm using sign up since I'm focusing on login. So let's inspect login itself. 
So we have the login here. So as we have it here, if you want to uh, probably check here, you can see the option here to use experts. Here we have export, we have CSS also here. So if you click on this, it's bring copy. But to double check, you can click on Control F on this DOM and then you paste it here. So this is showing you one of one. I don't know if everyone can see. This is showing you one of one. It shows that this particular locator is actually directing you to one particular element here on the web page, on this page that you have. So it means that this is only unique for this uh, button here. Let me see what I can do. Let's try and probably do something wrong here. So if I put in something here, as you can see, it's zero of zero. But one thing you should always look out for is one of one. Sometimes you might have one of two, you might have one of 60 something, but that will now boils down to how you can craft uh, your locator, whether you're using CSS or expert. But I don't think we can actually go into that today because it's a little bit advanced, I would say. So with this right now, let's copy this. And uh, we go to our code. And then since we are using expert, you can select expert from the drop down or you write X expert and uh, you then do your open and close. You do the two codes and then you paste it in between. And you put the semicolon at the back of it. This is for that. And then you since next one is trying to okay, let me be using the feature file as the right thing to do. So the next one is trying to uh, enter the username. Uh, so I can go and also do the private by uh, username um, by. So let's check. Let's go back also again and inspect what we have. Mm. Strange. So if we inspect this also, the username, this text area button here that we are trying to inspect is this. So we have it here also. We can copy it here. And also, but I want also want to to put something out there should in case you're struggling with having to, with getting this and uh, you just want to stick with this if you click on or right click on this on this line that you're having and then you click on copy and you want to use expert or selector so let's go with expert and then uh, you sorry you come here and then you select the expert, the open and close, and then the two codes. And then if you paste it inside, you will be getting some errors, but it's not something that you should be worried about. The only thing you have to do is to come to uh, this line here, which has the two codes here and two codes here. It shouldn't be, it should only be just one code and not the double one. So all you need to do is to put in one and then the second one here, you cancel it and put in one too. But I won't really advise to do this actually, but it's just, I don't know, you guys uh, would say starting and it's it should be acceptable for now. But in this situation, I'm just trying to show you if you guys are not going to use the uh, selectors orb you can and you just want to go with them or uh, with the dumb horn you will have this you might come across this issue and uh, that is just how to solve that but i will be going with here which is more crafty and well organized so uh so let me delete this so yeah and uh 
So that is that. And the next one is the password. But password. Cost by dot. Mm. So yeah, the password here. So let's inspect this. So we are having this here, and this is this is it. So also we should please don't be like me that I forgot to check right now if it's one of one. So then you just do control F and then you paste it in there for you to double check. So as you just can see it, it's one of one. <clears throat> it's very, very important to always check that. So since we're also using expert also for that, um, you paste it in in it and uh, that's the password. So we also working on remember me and then you say like this, remember me and by dot. So let's inspect also, which is this checkbox that we're trying to inspect. So we have it here also. So let's in this case, let's use CSS so it don't look like I'm probably I'm using only expert alone and everybody feel like that is the best. So and then you click on that. And then the next one is the uh, login button. But login button. So let's also inspect that. OK, so I can use this. It's short rather than having the long one of, of the CSS. OK, so we think login yeah, login future. Yeah. So let me just cancel all of this. But was bit so so login feature. I feel like we've covered. I feel like we've covered most of it here, and then we've covered the remember me checkbox to click on both login button. Then the next one is then courses prep major landing page is displayed so uh in that i think yeah what we need to do is to start writing our, our method for that and then what we need to do here is to do our public void so this is where the find element will come in like <coughs> person hacks that time so in this situation, we are trying to click on sign up. Then we will say click uh, sign up. And then you put open and close. And you to, then you write your method here by saying driver dot find element. So which element are you trying to find? You are trying to find the sign up. And what do you want it to do? You want it to click. And uh, the next one is public void also. Well, and then somewhere around you want to have uh, the web driver to input something to enter. <laughs> uh a data for you a parameter for you so you do enter uh username and then you do this uh, driver dot find element so what element are you trying to find username dot in this situation, you are not clicking, and then all of these here are kind of like something that we will uh, be using moving forward. Uh, these options here, 
most of them are very useful. Moving forward, we would when we get into uh, automation better, we will get to understand how they are being used. But in this situation, we'll be using uh, more of a uh, click and uh, more of uh, send keys mostly. We'll be using more of those. But the eight thing is, anytime you are trying to pass in any parameter into a text area like this, you use send keys. But when you're trying to click on anything, on any elements, you use dot click. I hope that is uh, clear. So since we are doing this, we are using send keys. So send keys in any time you're using send keys, you it's more like you're trying to send something, and the web driver is, it's more it's gonna ask you like what are you trying to send? So you need to put in uh, a string to pass a string. We call it a string. That okay, I'm trying to pass in something called let's say username, but when you're passing a string here, uh, if we check the steps here you because you yeah in this feature file here this is me passing the string here which is username and my password and i'm saying that i want the web driver to enter the username and the username is this i want the web driver to enter the password and the password is this so if you want the web driver to do this then you need to pass this parameter on in the code also so for you to do that you can also see when we generate our step definition we have here string p whole p0 so this p0 it's default but we need to also pass our string here also but uh since we have it here as it is so we need to pass the string i call put the string there and we'll put it username and what you have here must be the same with what you have in this what you're passing using the same keys also must be the same as as a string also so we have that and then the next one is public void uh enter password and then also because password also has its own parameter so we need to string that also but while you are stringing it you try not as possible to make sure that it's not of the same thing, uh, probably the same parameter you're passing with what you have in any part of your code. But in this situation, we can I can just write it like this, so I can differentiate it from what I have already, so as not to make mistakes. So then you do driver dot find element. So the element is uh, password dot send keys and you as you can see we have the option here to pass the string also which is better so the next one we are doing is uh remember me button so that is a button that you need to click it's a checkbox that you need to click Martin. so Martin. remember me uh, and then which you don't need to string that. Sorry, please can you mute? So doing that, you have your driver with your method also, and then you're trying to power find the element, and then you'll be using the click. So the next one is uh. The, the login button that we're trying to uh, click this last one here so it's uh probably void it's it's still trying to click uh login button and then driver dot find element login button dot click and we do this. So we've uh, 
we've been able to go through all of this that we have, all the elements that we're trying to pass. And then the last one is our assertion on our future file. Let's check. And then, which is the then, it's how we need to assert that what we are working on is perfect, more like you're trying to cross check. Like, okay, yeah, it's fine. And then, so we need the web driver to be able to do that for us. So what we need to do is to have our assertion. So uh, we have different types mm -hmm. of assertion. Hello? Yeah, please. I have a question. Okay. Um, what's the meaning of string, string username, string password? Okay, I would go back then. So we have on this feature file here. The thing is this: people, uh, a lot of people have it differently. We can, if we, if we trying to automate another different scenario right now we might not use this situation or this scenario that I'm passing my parameters on the future file. But what I'm just doing is just logging feature, which is, I think it's easy for, so everybody can understand how uh, Lucator's work. So I'm stringing my parameters here on the future file. So it's because you have parameters, that's why you use the term string. Exactly. So I, I'm passing. It helps you to pass your parameter on your on your code here. So I what need to if, use that. Okay. What if maybe your parameter is maybe you want one capital one um, small um, one cap um, capital letter one lower cap things like that. How do you string that then? No matter how, no matter what you want to pass, be it, be, for example, let me understand what you're saying. Uh, let me just. You know, you this. have a capital letter G in that password. Right? Yeah, no, no, it doesn't matter. No matter what you're passing here, it's exact same thing it will pass for you here. So it depends on what you are writing here. If you put in, if I put in anything at the back of this thing and say, 762 capital letter G, capital letter F, small letter K, L, J. It's going to pass this same exact thing for me. Do I, okay. do I answer your question? You are yeah, asking. I'm just the character now of the password. You understand? Yeah. You say the character of the password, for example, this is capital letter G and the rest are small letter and it's, it's yeah. going to pass it. So if you decide that, okay, you want it, you, your Parameter you're passing is capital letter G and capital letter F, right? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It's more like, uh, uh, how will I say? Uh, it's how you sit down in, in a picture or how you post in a picture, you'll see yourself. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's just it. And uh, okay. So last thing is to do, do our assertion, which is, uh, uh, different type of assertion that we have. We have uh, fluent assertion and unit assertion and different types. So I think when you guys get to that point, it will be uh, much more elaborate. So, uh, but I will be using my, uh, I'll be using the URL to assert, which is pretty, uh, pretty easy and straightforward. So in this situation, I will be doing I won't be using void anymore. I'll be using boolean because I want it to return something for me. So what I want to return is that I want it to return uh, the URL of the application I'm working with, or probably the page, or probably uh, the area that you're trying to assert that, okay, yeah, I can see this and it's actually working. So I will be doing public bool. And then what I do is this, sometimes I call it lazy, but what I do is I copy this, it, then I go to my page, I paste it there. Because I'm trying to say, my public bull, I want to confirm that the courses of prep and your landing page is displayed. So, and I try to change it to capital letter. It's just a lazy way of me of working actually, but it's just something I'm used to. So then I put my, Open and close at the back of it. Then uh, the return 
what am I trying to return? Like, what do I want the web driver to return for me? Since I'm trying to uh, assert the URL. So for me doing this, I would want us to actually take a step backward again, which is let's log in again. So and then password. So let's log in again. So this is what we are trying to do. We want to confirm that if we click on this, then the login page, uh, the login functionality is working. Then after that, what's going to happen? The the instructor page, or probably the the landing page, or page that's going to display next we just need to assert it so which page is that so we just need to wait a little bit so yeah the landing page is displayed here so what we need to do is what i need to do is this is the landing page that is displayed okay yeah fine i can see it it is fine then i want to use my url here for my assertion which is doing that so what i just need to do is to go back to my page then I say driver dot uh, URL dot. You see a lot of things here. It say contain starts with ends with trim clone compared to equals to. We have all of these that you can use, but I will be using contain. Saying contains, then you do open and close your two codes, then you paste the URL inside of it. You open and close. So this is our page objects that have been done and ready for our login feature. So we are, let's move to our step definition, which I believe you guys have been uh, taught how to do this. So, uh, so I will just go through this quickly so we can be sure that what we have is working. So I call my web driver and then also my base def. And then I will do the login page. Let me let me, re, re, let me rename this thing. That was a mistake. Double N. Okay. So it doesn't need. Okay. Yeah. So automatically change also. So and then let's see here. Now steps here. So login. Uh, so put the login page or call my page on my step definition and uh, I will do it. If, if you put in the first line of uh, first letter of this page of your page or of your page objects it will bring all of this option for you so what you need to, to, to do is to pick the first one which is the small letter and then it's been it's been like uh designed for you in the camera case and then you do it equals to new and then you will see this here automatically displaying for you then select it but i try not as possible to always make some differentiation someone taught me that so i put because if you want to write to call this in your step definition sometimes you might make mistake because you might not know which one you want to use. It's this capital letter hell and this small letter hell. So to make it easier for me, I tend to put in a sign at the at the front of it, which is underscore. So and then uh, I will call my base test, my hooks, and uh, my web driver.
Ganz weird. No. Login steps. And login public higher web driver. Driver equals okay. Sorry. Sorry, I missed the semicolon at the back of this, so we need to be paying attention to a lot of things. So which I'm also guilty of. Uh the public web driver mm. this is right okay sorry i yeah, also that was a bit of that. yeah 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 sorry i noticed that right now and yeah this is all of, all of, yeah. Yeah. i noticed that thank you so yeah so uh we need to start by right uh by calling our method here and writing our step definition so i i try as much as possible uh in my own uh, way i put in my uh url on my step definition but i was watching the past videos that you guys uh like you guys were being taught i noticed that the URL was uh like passed or string on the hooks. So but it doesn't matter, it depends on how you feel comfortable writing it. So I well I always pass mine here on my step definition. So then I put in my driver don't navigate to your go to URL and then I do the open and close. I put the ads and then I put my two quotes and I put in the website there. And then, so going to the next one, which is when I click on login button. So, uh, I can do this login dot, uh, as you can see, if you have your, your method correctly on the page object, it will be easier for you working on it on the step definition. So if you click on this and you put in dots, it will give you the next thing that you should put there. So in this situation, it, uh, it's sign up, sorry. My apologies on that. I made a mistake, I should change it to sign up there. So, uh, and I enter username, no, 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 no. Click on okay, okay. I will okay, which is good. Okay, um, I like that actually. Well, I just made a mistake, but it's something that everybody can do. Oh, it's good, it's part of the learning. So let's move forward. So we have the login page. Dots. The next one is enter username. And then you put your open and close and right here. But here you have the string option here and it's expecting you to pass a string. So in on our page, we have the string as username and P word. So just the same thing you just have to do here. You and then you change the P0 to username, which is what you are string here. And then, so the next one also, it's password, but we put it as P-word. And then it's enter password. So, well, let's put in this, login page dot enter password. And then you can see here, so you just do this. So then the next one is saying, click on remember me checkbox and let's call in this also it's click remember me checkbox and then you put the semicolon here so yeah sorry we'll notice anything 
or probably any mistake or probably am I missing anything? I want to be sure that we all are on the same page. I actually made a mistake, but I want to be sure if anyone like if anyone noticed. Put, um, put your click on the login button. Before sorry, you we, put, sorry, before we you put the Chica. Oh God, Chica, why are you talking, please? Sorry, please. I only want the intent to talk. I don't want people like Chica talking. Thank you. Sorry, if if you if you don't notice, please just or if you don't understand what I'm saying, can you just say you don't understand? Also, I will be able to know that. Okay, I, I can just show you guys rather than just changing it by myself or correcting myself. Hello. Hello. I, I, I want to try actually. Please try. Think, there's there's no error here. You, if I follow what you've done from that, when I enter password, when I click on member me checkbox, yes, yeah. then maybe you should have. When I click on login, um, button or something. Yes, you are right. That I should I should have that but I don't have it on my step definition. So what happened? Probably I I lent it to someone or, or probably someone stole it from me. So that is, you're right actually, that is missing. So we need to look at how we can solve that. So it's just, if you check our feature file right here, we have options, we have the feature file saying that given the navigator the website, when I click on login button and I enter username and I enter password and I click on remember me checkbox and I click on login button, then courses of prep major, courses prep major landing page is displayed. The thing about using uh, uh, Kekin and then using, uh, uh, how should I say, spec flow is the fact that you, you tend to uh, it's good with using uh it's called reusability of of your code so in this situation here i have my line 11 and my line 7 at the same thing so what the web driver is going to do when it starts running or when i click on run is that it's going to count this one my line 7 and line 11 as the same thing so since it's automatically counting as the same thing, then it's more like there's no reason for me to repeat myself. So that is why you are only having one of these and we are not having the second one here. So we need to change that. So it's more like saying now that change how we write it. So when I click on login, menu no login I okay thank you thank you login icon on the edit menu and i click on login button thank you so in this situation now we just need to regenerate our uh our step definition so rather than click on generate we just need to copy method and then we go back to our step here. Uh, when we do that, we find the right place that we need to put it there. So for you to be sure, sometimes you can put it in a lot of space so you won't make mistakes. Then you will then delete this one. Mm. Actually, in this situation, I won't delete this one because it's only just giving me one of it. So I will be needing that also. But in other situations that you're trying to de regenerate or probably add something to your uh, feature file, you might need to delete it. But in this situation, I don't need to delete that because it's still more like the same thing. But what I just need to do is to take this out, my method out. So in this situation here, it's, I'm trying to click on, on the, the icon there. 
So login dot click sign up and then we come to this one and then we would say login dot click login button then semicolon also since we are using a uh, different assertion we would also have to do our assertion also for this so in this situation what we do is we call in our page and then you do dot we have it here it's saying courses prep major landing page is displayed open and close dot in this fluent assertion it's more like you're saying that something is true and something is wrong and this should be true and this should be wrong so in more like a very short term for me to explain then you put should so open and close then you call your as you can see it's bringing fluent assertion then you put dots you see it here be true and like i said it's just more like confirming all things you see be true be false be awaiting enumerating equals to should and the likes not be but i will be working with be true because what i'm trying to assert is true so with what we have right now i can Mm, let me check. Yeah, so what we have right now, I can actually uh, run this test and then it should work. And if it doesn't, then we need to troubleshoot and see what is wrong. So I'm trying to build my code. Okay, so it's login. So let's run it. Click on run. So we have our web driver opening and then uh, we are saying that we wanted to click on login button you wanted to click on this you wanted to do that so as you can see it's working and our test is passing so uh so do you guys see that or was that too fast or do i need to slow it down so you can see how it actually passed all the parameters that we have here hello if you yeah, can repeat it again uh, please yeah. slow down deeply. repeat I will, I will you, you slow you down yeah to go over them just go slow Okay, let's see how we can do that. Let me put some weight so that it will take some time. Uh, okay, let's let me put some weight to it. So. Mm, let me put it at 2000. So it will be. It's our username. Mm, no, this shouldn't be up to that. It's not. Hello? Is, is it's that this thread slip? Is, is it like the timer or what? Yeah, it's a timer. I'm trying to put in a timer there. I just I want most of them to see how like how it's been done because they say that probably it's too fast. So I'm trying to put some weights there 
so that it will, they will see how the parameters have been passed and how the buttons have been clicked. So the 2000, is it, is from it, what range to what range? It's, it's in seconds, no milliseconds. So this is more like saying, if you convert it, more like, uh, it's not up to like, Mm, it's not up to it's not up to one minute, I would say, or probably oh, or yeah, it's not up to one minute or two seconds, I would say. So, but I'm just trying to put in in weights there. So, oh, click remember me, click login button. Mm, okay, I just play around with this so everybody can see. So let's run it again. It's just like first time I, I did my, it felt like magic to me. So I had to put weight on it and see how it's like, okay, it's actually working. So you said you should click on login, but login, as you can see, it's click, that's click on that. Yeah, pass the first parameter, it does pass the password, it clicks on remember me, it's not clicking on login. So because we said that, okay, you should do all of this. And when you probably, the web driver has logged in successfully, the page is going to display, it's what you want to assert. But if also here, so it's passing also, but it's not always compulsory that you assert with this password. I'll be with your URL rather. You can assert with anything, with the U logo, you can use that with anything that you can pick up on that page, you can use it to assert it. It's more like saying that you want to click on, uh, you want to visit, or probably you are going to uh, the dashboard here, and you click on dashboard, or, or the account, user account settings, and then the page is displayed. You can pick up, pick up anything on this page to assert it. You understand. If I'm working on this and I also feel lucky, I want to use the uh, the URL. I need to copy all of this because it contains the user account setting, which is very unique for this page. So if you use just if I use just only courses of prep major, it might not work because it's not full. It's not a complete one. Uh, but sometimes, like uh, let me see. Sometimes I according to what I said here, I said contains. It's just as it's not like the URL has to be complete because sometimes some URL is very, they are very, very long, but you just need to look for some important information on that page that you need to look into and just put it there. So that is that about uh, hello? how to hello, hello. Yeah, um, uh, what of because in, uh, when I was writing my own test case for my manual testing, right? Okay. I didn't use uh, syntax. You understand? I okay. used. I don't know if it is. I don't know what it is called, but I used the normal one. <laughs> okay, you didn't use the Gherkin syntax. <laughs> I understand. Is it what? Okay. I said I used just the normal um, method. I understand. I understand what you're saying. Okay, so are you saying if I want to now do automation now, I have to go and convert everything back to syntax yes wow. you are it's not it's not don't don't let us call it syntax it's called gherkin so, so let's, yeah. let's try and be using the right terminology for okay. it so you have to convert it to gherkin syntax and then you have to write it in this way because this is what the web driver understand oh so the advice would be if i'm writing my manual testing i should yes. just follow gherkin Syntax. Exactly. So I don't do exactly. Um, double, double, work. double work. Exactly. Oh, exactly. Oh, okay. Okay. Exactly. It it depends actually because at my place of work right now I'm doing manual auto manual testing and uh, we, we we are not looking at gene automation in probably anytime soon. So I think I would say I'm writing it in the way that you said you're writing it. But if you're going to do automation, I would advise you 
to just stick to the Gherkin scissors from yes. the onset so that you will have to rewrite it all over again. Okay. So that, that other method, what do you call the name? It's just rewriting your test cases. Okay. Is that as if they call it any method? No, 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 not oh. really, not really. Just you writing your test case. Mm -hmm. To my own knowledge, I would say. <laughs> so, okay, but this... Yeah, 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 yeah you are right. Yeah. Oh, it's not called anything, but these days, people will call it traditional approach. <laughs> because it's in there, but it's not like there's a name for it. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, any question? I think we still have like 30 minutes. So I would say, I don't know, if you, we can do something else, probably we can express some pages, I don't know, so that we can see some other pages also, unless just, just one or two things. So let, let's see what can we expect on this page also, if we are on the landing page. Sorry, can I ask a question? Please go ahead. Yeah, so in this instance, can you put the parameters in get and setters? Can I put the parameters in where? In, um, you know, getters and setters. These parameters. Right. Can, can you I store them in get and set, getters and setters? Sorry, I actually yeah, didn't know that. Answer. Yeah, the answer is yes, anyway, but not necessarily. You don't need to. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So uh what he was asking me for is you know these getter and setters that you use when you are declaring your classes actually. So you, you can also use that for to declare your variables actually, but it's not that kind of compulsory, but you could use that approach as well. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you, Dodi. Oh, thank you. And then I think also I was trying to uh, cut across some other uh, groups, which is, uh, I think, Long Reach Way this evening. So I don't know if we can uh, do a little bit on that. Um, let me see. Uh, I have the page, the steps. Let me see here. Yeah. So I think let's see if we can quickly run this before the end of the if our time expires. Just to have some more knowledge. So this is this is long reach way application. And then I would just to pass uh some knowledge across. Uh, as a QA, uh, it's advisable to, if you've been given any URL or something, uh, you should maybe work on incognito mode because right now I just missed something which is very, very important. Uh, but if you're using any incognito mode, you will miss it. What I just missed is the fact that this cookie consent here did not display because I've already accepted it. But so that's just one of the few, few things that you can just be putting in mind while uh, at your place of work. So we have it here saying that this, then if you click on, I agree, and but I don't want to click on, okay, I can click on it. Yeah, we can just do that again. If you click on, I agree, which is the first thing you have to do on the website, because without that, you can't do anything, I guess. So let's see if we like, we have all of this page here on this menu and we have about us and then which is this page and uh, yeah so let's see if we can just do this quickly so i've my apologies i've probably just done most of it actually so i have my feature file ready and then my uh step and my page also it's ready so let's let's inspect for everyone to see so let me cancel this again and open it again
So. We have that. So here, like I said, you click on this and you click on submit. And also, uh, you might also want probably have the same issue where you're trying to use the select us orb, which is you might know it's does it doesn't work in incognito. So you just click on inspect this, and then as you can see, we have all of these here, which is this. The second one is showing something else, but this is how to be sure of how to navigate that. And like I said earlier, if you're having doubts of which one is it, or probably you're not really sure, you can click on this button here. When you click on this and then over on what you're trying to inspect, it will show, direct you to the one here. So, but for you guys right now, you can, if you want to copy the selectors or selectors air, or probably you want to copy the expert, you can do any one you like, but I actually copied it here. But if you then you do your one of one and you confirm that you have it of one of one, which is here. But well, there are also ways to craft these to write it in a better way, but I don't want us to take so much time on going deep into that and confusing a lot of people. So let's just stick to the basic that we have right now. If you click on that, I think uh, we select uh, the CSS or experts, I think. Yeah, OK, experts and uh, let me see. OK, yeah, expert, so put it there. And after that, it's we've done that and you can come here uh, if you want to click on the about us that you're trying to inspect is this and uh, you go to your selectors orb this is how uh, you select the expert here also which is short one and long not too long that is one of the reasons for using the selectors orb not to have a situation like let me show you to avoid situations like okay this is not bad but to have a situation like uh, you have div because it might start from the root and then we start from the roots you have situation exactly situation like this you understand so it's still going to point you to where you are going but having all of these in your uh, your in your script of like on your code is totally really look good so that is one of the reasons why it's like those up and then kind of like go with the short one. So I think I have that already. So let's see. Yes, I've done all of this and uh, public pool. So let's see how that works. Hope. Okay, that is nice. So right now, uh, our test is failing, which is um, which is really good, I would say, so that we can see the both sides of the coin when your locator uh, is failing and when it's passing. So right now, our locator is actually failing, and uh, the web driver is unable to locate that element. So we. Uh, need to troubleshoot that and see what is really going on or probably i picked the wrong one and that is why i said uh the the locator is more like a very important thing on your automation that you need to know so yeah now it's time for us to see what is really wrong so for you to troubleshoot that to start that as you can see it's showing red which is wrong 
then you right click on it and then you click on open with test log. So when you open your test log, you would see a lot of, uh, I don't know, sometimes maybe at the beginning you might not really understand, but you, what you need to focus on is a message here that is saying, first of all, it's saying there are no such elements, unable to locate elements. And we, I don't know if you can do some personal uh, learning, we all, like there are lots of uh, messages here, unable to locate elements, different types, uh, uh, timeout or probably uh, no such elements available on stuff like that. So if you can look at that yourself to be able to understand that. So here you see not able to look at elements and it's giving us the method and the expert, blah, 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 blah. So, and uh, it means that it's unable to locate. So we want to know where is the problem exactly coming from. So if you scroll down a little bit on the standard output here, you would see the first one is saying giving a navigate. And on this particular page or this section, you will see all the step definition like being listed out here. Then that is where you can see where it's actually failing from. So first of all, it shows that they were able to navigate. But the second one is when I click on yes, I agree on the cookie banner, no such element, unable to locate element. So that is how you get to like troubleshoot uh, when you're having uh, element issue or locators issue. But in this situation, I'm actually like, surprised why that is happening. But let me see if if Trader Sleep would do some magic there. If you can put some weights there, let's see. Okay, let's let's build and let's see. Okay, interesting. So it's still filling. So we need to uh, look at some other parts or what could be the reason for that. Okay. Okay, so we're trying to look for this and uh, it's a button. Okay, yes, I agree. Oh god, where do I have this? Oh god. Mm. Okay. Let me just do this instead. Mm. Okay, let's see this. Uh, let's try. I'm trying to customize that and see how that will work.
Okay, so I would do this. Uh, where is this? Yes, I agree. Okay, so let's try that. Let's build. Okay, so hopefully, so I've changed the uh, the locator from export to CSS. So and I kind of like customized it. So let's see. Hmm. Okay, interesting. Button, so. Okay. Hmm, I want this to stop running so it won't get given me a misbeauty issue. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I will have to look at this and let's switch. To active element. Okay, let me say something. Okay, when I get here, can I do anything? No, I can't. So this is the first thing to do. Okay. Okay, so let's inspect again. Let's see what's going on. And for the part that let's have this again. Control half. Okay. Interesting. Zero of zero. And shoot on three, and it was given one of one at some point. Okay, now I have one of one, so. What could it be wrong? Click 
clear. Beard. We don't think we need to do too big of writing some code here. Okay, and then about us, very far. Mm, let's debug. Oh God, I didn't put a breakpoint. Actually clicked. Interesting. So good. And then yeah, it passed. So as you can see, I needed to like get the accurate elements, and sometimes it's a little bit tricky. To, to locate and to find the right one to use. So you might uh, come across a situation like this, so you don't have to panic, but you just need to look into it very well and be able to locate the right one that you're looking for. And one thing I noticed here was the fact that the one I copied initially was different from this one. And then I was uh, having a, two quotes at the back, which I shouldn't, which is the reason why it was, it was giving me zero of zero. So when I uh, changed that, I was able to have this. So I think uh, we're able to have one that passed successfully and one that actually was failing and then we need to troubleshoot. So, which is just good. And I think we have 10 more minutes. Is there any question? Yeah. Um. Yes. Sorry. Um. I wanted to say if we could uh, please maybe do some inspection on um maybe sub menu sub maybe sub menu dates and tab inside tabs and things like that. Uh, if I do that for you, then you, <laughs> I feel like you. <laughs> We can do that actually, but uh, I would actually suggest that you do that yourself. So as to get some challenge, I would say. So as to have some challenge, because at some point you should still have some like, uh, this is um, one, two, three, four. So you should have like, you should get to a point, you know, in, in, in this training whereby you should, I should be seeing something like 15 lines of future file or probably you should be having scenario outline and then having like uh, a lot of parameters you're passing. So that's more like challenging yourself. If I'm going to do that for you right now, you will just, you won't be able to challenge yourself more. I would say that. Um, you could actually do one and then we carry on with the other ones. Maybe like date, date selection and talk. Uh, do we have a date selection here? So, for example, okay, with this, let's see, and then. Okay, let's work on this then. Let me see this. Click on this and then you click on hard cost. And then hard cost page is displayed. Okay, let's do one then. 
So let's without doing too much, let's just about I mean lagging feature. Okay, but in this situation, I won't have to go through the worst steps of uh, creating the new feature file and the likes. I will just try and work with the one I have with me here. So if you don't mind, I hope I won't get you guys lost. So here it's saying that I click on login button, and then I, I believe that the landing page is displayed. And I, and I click on user menu icon or user, user account icon let me call it that okay sorry my my bad what i'm trying to achieve here is i want to navigate to uh add a course page which is uh after a user has logged in successfully and then clicks on this and then should be able to select one of these drop down. Is that good enough? It's like you said, a tab in a tab. Yeah, no, it's, it's, okay. it's okay. 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 Yeah, You're welcome. So we want to achieve this to hard course. So let's go. And then I click on that and I click on the user account icon. And I click, I click on uh, add a course on the drop down, add a course option on the drop down, then. The other cost page is split. Okay, so we will be adding three uh, steps here to our future file. So let's click on generate and then you click on copy. Then you go to our steps here. So since we won't be using this then anymore, so let's comment it out. So to comment out, you just click, let me uncomment again. So if you want to comment out any line of code that you are not using or you think probably it's not in use currently, you just need to highlight it. And then you see this here, this uh, option here, you just click on it and then it automatically uncomment it out for you. So since we have click on login button, then now we've copied our steps, so we just paste it here. So after doing that, let's go to our page to write, uh, to put in our elements and also write our method for all the new all the new steps that we've just added. So let's start by this private bar. And then the first one we we first one is uh click on user account user icon. So let's go back and we're saying that we want to click on this and like i said also if you want to double check you can just do that and then if you click on it it will give it to you here directly but if you want to use the selectors orb it's also good which is this and then you select let's go with s part and uh, on the page then uh we call it let's say user icon and then uh, we are going with expert oh sorry so 
So after that, the next one is uh, start clicking on this. You will have a drop down here saying hard course. Then you express this also. Okay, to drop down. Any item, any item, of course. Not students. Okay. Mm, we might actually overuse our time a little bit. And uh, by hard, is it hard course or hard course? Hard course. Experts. Okay. So then the next one is uh the added cost page is displayed. So rather than me using what have the last time I was using the URL for my session. So let me use something else this time around. Okay, we are waiting for that. So while we wait for that, let's see what we can do here. Okay, we won't okay, we will still be using this, but we won't be using this exactly. So let's let's comment it out also so and not to make mistakes. So let's input her method here. The first one is user icon. Public void, uh, click user icon. We are driver dot find element with user icon. Let's click. Uh, maybe put in some space there. So, and then the next one, public. Void. Uh, it's click. Click on hard course. Um. Dot find element, and then we should have it there. Hard course dot clear. Okay, let's see if we might not be requiring the use of select. Hopefully, uh, public word hard course, and then the next one is okay. The page is displayed. So, in this situation, let's see what can we. Assert. So I don't want to use the URL like I used earlier on. So let me see. Then I would say uh, the hard price is displayed. No, but let me see what do I have in my future for that would be this. Oh. At the cost page is displayed. That's what I have. So let me change it here. 
Other cosplay just displayed. Okay, let's put it that way. So we need to generate this one. Oh, that's weird. Okay, yeah. So all of those are bind, they bind it. So let me generate this one. It's the last one. So just good. Yeah. So let me go back to my page. Then the last one, public bow. And like I said, it's just this. It's more of like me being lazy and writing or writing something else because it's what I'm trying to achieve. So just put it there. Okay. Then in this situation, since we won't be using Flint assertion, we'll be using the end unit. So it will be uh assert dot no assert, then you will hover on it. And then you call that, which is the end unit assertion. Then assert dot is true. Then you do the open and close. Yeah. So this is. Uh, No, something is wrong. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Uh, no, 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 that is. No, that's meant to be used on the step definition. So you do return driver dot find element then you put in the element that we are trying to okay yeah we have not even inspected that so sorry we need to inspect the element which is the add price that we are trying to use So we can still use this part here and uh, add prices dot export. We we'll put it there and we we'll come down here. We we'll put the find element add prices dot displayed. Open and close, then you put the brackets there. Mm, sorry. Semicolon, rather. Sorry. And yeah, you have that. So let me close all of these gaps that we have. So it will look neat. So we have that. So let's go to our step. So in this step, we have talking about account icon. So we'll do 
I hope you guys understand what I'm doing. Uh, we have this driver uh, calling the, the account icon, which is user account icon. And the next one is login page that for the add course. Yeah, click that, calling our page, um, page objects. And then we need to assert that the page is actually uh, been displayed and the element too is displayed. So we need to do with assert dot Then you need to call this and then it's using now any unit is true. Uh, underscore login page dot displayed then put this yeah I think yeah I think we are good we have our feature file is it binding save yeah okay good our step good also and our page object too it's good so let's run it again which is login Let's see. Okay, so you should click on login, should send the parameters, click on remember me, click on login. Okay, I would say you should click on the icon there okay that's filling also so we need to troubleshoot that also and to know why the icon is filling notice uh, something Okay, I should probably check it from here. So uh, while we are waiting for this, is there any question? So probably said I will be rounding up quickly. We are already above, like over the time. Is there any question? Yeah, just just a quick one. Um, so what if the element is on the footer design and you want the page to scroll down? 
would you have yeah. to write a code for that? Mm, maybe, maybe not. Sometimes you might, or sometimes you might not need to. It depends. Uh, if uh, you are sure that the, for if you are sure of the elements that you have the accurate one, but it's still not, you are getting the results of probably, uh, and probably you are getting results like uh, no such elements, no such uh, element results. You are getting probably element not visible, or you are getting an uh, invalid selector, or uh, probably no such frame or timeout exception, or probably any type of exception that you are getting. Then you will probably need to write uh, just one line of code for that to more like force it down to like for the web driver to to go down of the like to the last bottom of the page if it's uh, uh, the footer. But yeah, there, there's a line of code for if you want the uh, web device to go to any particular section of, of the page of the application. So can we know that code or it's too late for that? I would say it's too early. Oh, OK. I would say it's too early. Thank you. You're welcome. Mm. Yeah, hello. Hello. Yeah, sometimes when we want to um, create a new feature, yeah, um, it doesn't bring the drop down. Does it mean anything? Does it stop anything when we are running our code? Sorry, which feature are you talking about? The feature file. Okay. On, let me... on the solution, yeah, on the solution as well. It doesn't bring any drop down like this. Yeah, the drop down opposite. Uh, this one? Front of, no, no, no. Which one? Click on it. Click on that one. Okay. Yeah, the C sharp one. Yeah, that one. No, no, no. It's not. It means I don't. Does it, it stop it, anything? If it doesn't. No, no, bring... no, 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 no. It doesn't. Uh, it oh, it shows that you're still working. Like you have not run your stuff, and it's still still work in progress. Oh, thank you. So it's not something to worry about. It will definitely show when you start running your your. Oh, start running your script. Okay, thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. So let's see. I've changed this to CSS, and then uh, sorry, I'm I'm not preaching what I'm not practicing what I'm preaching. So let me. Okay, one of one, which is which is good. Okay, so. Let's run it again. Uh, let test you. Let me see. Maybe so. Let's do some cleaning and build. Okay, let's do this. Uh, login. Okay, let's see. I'm fully sure it oh, has been a new call. We have should work. Should I remove those weights from here? It's going to take time. Okay, it is good to know.
the totally fill in again. Interesting. Let me, let me allow this to complete so I can stop it. So much time. Okay, if you're gonna mm. let me do some things. No. Sorry, I'm I'm taking out all the weights because I need it to be fast so that we won't be staying here for so long. But it has to it has these default settings of executing it like three times so and it's taking longer than it should. Okay. So, okay, that is filling. Good. So let's see why it's filling. Element not interactable. Okay, good. Element not interactable. So, Let's look for why or what is really wrong. Expecting this again. And then if we select it from here, let's see from here like this. If you put it here, it's giving one of one, which is good. Let's try this, hopefully it works. So let me see. Let's try and do this, hopefully. Do, 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 do. Okay, let's try this. So let's build. And let's see. I shouldn't be 
shouldn't be a weight issue. So Mm-hmm. 
Oh God, hello? Hello? Oh, sorry, have I been muted? All oh, true. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh my God, and nobody called my attention to that. You are going to join me in prayer. We are waiting oh. for you to finish up. Oh God, I've been talking and then I was even asking, like, have I answered your question? I, have I been able to do that? That was God. <laughs> well, you know, the, the reason why we pitched it was so you are, you are still debugging it, so that's why. That's yeah, 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 yeah. I was actually like, even while I was debugging, I was talking like, yeah, if you want to debug sometimes, this is how you put your breakpoint. I was showing everything then. I have no idea that was muted. God, I'm so sorry. But let me just go back a little bit. So while I was debugging, I don't know if you. Uh, you needed to put a breakpoint just to see if one has, or like step by step what it's actually doing. Is it actually working or is it not working? So I, when I put a breakpoint here, because this is more like where the problem was coming from, so I was able to see that the new uh, element I put on my page of that is actually uh, like interactable and the web driver was able to locate it. So I would then how I just I was I felt like yeah that that is good. Then I just run the test then. So then I was able to do that. But I I how but were you guys able to see how it was how it clicked on the user icon? Then also clicked on the uh, ad course. Then the ad course page was displayed. Yes, yes, you can see. Okay. Oh, do I need to run that again? So I, I'm actually very sorry. I didn't know I was muted. I was just my microphone was acting up. So I think that's. I think we are we are good right now. And like I said, if you are having any issue or probably trouble with getting that, you can just uh, reach out and yeah. Oh, we should be able to look into that together. So do what do you say? So you can just talk about the debugging. I think you need to you need to tell them how to change it up here in log. Are you showing your screen again? Yeah, I'm sharing my screen. Okay, that's up there that uh, under the builds. Where they need to um, change it to debug. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, it's just well, rather than going to that, you can still do that on here and you can click on it and it will work. So it's not really a, a big deal over right there. But I just want to like be sure if, at least if you have been asked to locate your element, you you will be able to. And even if you will be having trouble with it, but the business is even if you, you're getting the wrong one, uh, at least you're able to get uh, but by using the uh, idea of what I said here, of even if you're getting the wrong one, you just click on this, select an element in the page and spread. Then when you select it, it will. Oh God, it's bringing it how? So it's a docky, a docky. So if you select that and then you're looking for these or probably any element on the if you just click on it it will give you the actual one that you're looking for just for you to double check and then after that you click probably you've copied it uh be it using the dom or using the uh selector and then you just click on control f on the dom control f and then you paste it there it should be if you are looking forward to one of one, please always do that and do not forget. It's very, very important. One of one, because if you are getting one of two, you won't the your automation will pass and you might lead to frustration and the likes. Yeah, so I think uh I will be putting the class on hand right now. If there's any question, please let me know or probably reach out to me or probably reach out to your QA lead or probably your QA mentor or QA buddies. So I think in the absence of no question, I will be putting the class on hand. I'm sorry for 
exceeding the time, 40 minutes. That's a lot. My apologies, everyone. Thank you so much, Balaji. That was really great. Thank you. Okay. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Balaji. Bye. Bye.